Hello pen people, back again today with another video talking about fountain pens as usual. You can see this piece of artwork my wonderful daughter did for me um, for Father's Day. Um, but today we are going to be talking about vintage fountain pens and in particular where to buy them and things you have to take into consideration. And this has come up for two reasons. One of them is, is that the inaugural um, Pacific Northwest fountain pen show is going to be happening uh, this weekend, um, June 8th on Saturday is the day I'll be there um, here in Portland, and there will be vintage pens to buy there, and um, the other thing is is that every time I show my vintage pens to people at the pen club or elsewhere, they ask me where I pick them up, and so I'll talk a little bit about that and the things you have to consider when you're going to be purchasing vintage fountain pens. Um, so vintage fountain pens are gorgeous. Um, and I'm just going to show a few of them here. Um, I've had um, pretty good luck getting a hold of the pens I like. Um, all of these are vintage pens that I've picked up in various ways. Um, you'll note that a lot of them are green. Well, that's kind of because I'm into green. Um, and anyway, so this is just a tiny, tiny amount of them. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of the the you know the best writing pens that I have are are these vintage pens, and each one of these pens has a story. And um, I don't know much of the story, but that's part of the, the 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 appeal of a vintage fountain pen, is thinking about where it's been, who's held it, what it's written, what kind of a, a story would this pen tell if it could talk about its life. Um, some of them you know are are stunningly beautiful, like this uh, Wallever Sharp Doric with its wonderful adjustable nib. Um, and a lot, let's just talk about how I pick, pick them up. A lot of these I purchased on eBay. Um, and eBay is kind of hit or miss. Uh, one of the things that everybody, you know, hopes for on eBay is that they're going to get a screaming deal. Um, and while that does occasionally happen, it doesn't often. And I think like, uh, Richard Binder has said in a recent article is, you know, that the notion that you're going to be able to pick up a, a, a good quality fountain pen, vintage, uh, for some incredible cheap price, uh, is, is wishful thinking for the most part, um, because there are more and more people who are looking for them now. And, uh, the prices I've been seeing pens going for on eBay these days are far more than I would pay. I find myself looking at them and watching the, the prices soar on some of them, knowing that there there are problems with the particular pen or knowing what the pens should really be selling for, at least in my mind, and they go for much more than that, and I wonder how the people feel after the fact. But part of that, too, is that the prices keep increasing. Um, and I've only been around in this business, you know, business, I'm not in business, but it, I've been around in the fountain pen community picking up vintage fountain pens for probably the last 10 years. And the prices have increased over that time period. Um, I think COVID was one of those things that kind of pushed the prices up as people had a little bit of extra money and they had a lot of extra time um, and they got into vintage pens and they had time to, to peruse the sales on eBay and other places. Um, but let's just talk about where you can buy them. You can buy them from repu reputable sellers, um, like this one. I picked this up from a local shop in Portland. Um, they didn't restore the pen. They were actually selling the, the pens that were restored by another gentleman whom I know, whom I know uh, from the Fountain Pen Club, and, and he does a wonderful job restoring these pens, and I had no qualms whatsoever purchasing this pen. The price was a little high, at least it seemed to me at the time, but knowing the retail costs and the cost of overhead for a, a book brick and mortar store, it was fine. And this is a fantastic oversized Schaefer with beautiful color, fully functional, great pen. A similar pen, an oversized Schaefer uh, in the Jade. This is one that uh, came to me unrestored. Um, I actually found this one in a uh, an antique shop. And so that's another place you can find these is sometimes if you go to antique malls and looking for them, you can find uh, fountain pens. But I will mention that oftentimes the fountain pens you will find in antique shops nowadays are overpriced too. And they are going to be very difficult to find. And at least in the last, you know, five or 10 antique shops I've wandered into, if they have any fountain pens, they're of very poor quality and they want way too much money for them. So it's very difficult to get a good deal in the fountain, in the antique stores anymore. 
but if you search, I still hear people finding deals. Um, and for example, this is one I picked up in an antique shop. Uh, this is a Conklin, uh, I believe it's the Nidura, and it's the large sized one. This is an expensive pen, um, very large nib. Um, and it had an ossified sack. I replaced the sack on it, uh, did a couple of minor repairs on the, on the, the barrel. Um, there was a, a little, a little chip out of it in one spot, but I, you know, I don't know if anybody will be able to see it. Uh, anyway, um, I paid $18 for it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, occasionally you will find some really good deals. This one, for example, I think I paid $40 for this one. It's, you know, worth a considerable, considerable more than that, being an oversized uh, balance in good shape. Um, and I think I have some others here that I also got for, you know, kind of a screaming deal, those things that kind of happen sometimes. Um, and then there's some unusual pens, too. Uh, this is a, uh, a Venus President. Um, it's not one of the ones that most people are looking for. And that is another thing I, I think I'll talk about in a little bit once I finish talking about where you get pens. Occasionally, I have been gifted pens. Um, I had a friend, for example, whose father, uh, who had recently passed away, had a fountain pen in their desk. They gave it to me. Turned out it was a very poor quality pen, but, you know, I, I graciously accepted it. I still have it. It's a decent working pen now. Um, it was in terrible, terrible shape, though. And so, you know... People who don't know fountain pens just, you know, oftentimes look at them and they all look the same to them. And, you know, whether it's a cheap pen or a good pen, it's hard for them to tell. And that's understandable. Um, but it's it's nice when people do give me a pen. Um, and I do enjoy fixing them, too. So there's kind of two sides to that. Anyway, um, so you can purchase, purchase them retail from people who sell vintage fountain pens. Um, and there are quite a few stores out there that do so. You know, you can look them up on the internet and stuff like that. Um, there are very reputable sellers like David Nishimura and others. Um, but I don't know all of them personally. Uh, well, Brian Anderson is another good one to purchase from. These are reputable sellers who will stand behind their product. They have uh, sections on their, their websites where they sell uh, f vintage fountain pens and they're going to be restored and in good condition or they will say otherwise, and they'll explain why. Um, again, but at retail stores, you're going to be paying a premium, um, but you have the the luxury of knowing that the pen will have been restored properly and that they will back up what they sell, and that's a good thing. Um, if you're looking for you know one good vintage fountain pen and you want you know not to get a lemon or something like that, it makes complete sense. Um, there are, are also you know the occasional random finds in uh, garage sales or in antique stores, which to me are fairly similar. Antique stores are just formal garage sales. Um, and sometimes you will find a deal there, but most of the time you won't. It's either going to be a piece of junk or their prices are going to be enormous and too much for what they're, they're, uh, what they're asking for, or they think that it's worth far more than it, than it should be. And that happens a lot too. And then the last one, which you know, happens more often, I think, for me and, then, and, and for other people is to purchase pens off of eBay and other auction sites similar to that, but eBay is the primary one. And most of these pens you're seeing here, I got off of eBay. Um, I think that there are just a couple of exceptions, you know, the ones that I've mentioned here, kind of like, you know, like this one and um, this one. But of the ones I purchased on eBay, though, not you know not all of them are, are advertised properly um they say uh you know a lot of times they'll say just it's a fountain pen as is they don't know if it works or not and that is at least honest the ones that i have problem with are people who are selling a lot of vintage fountain pens and they say that it is restored but it may not be um one pen that i pur purchased from uh a a seller uh is this Schaefer Crest um, and they said that they had replaced the seal at the back, which is what you need with these vacuumatic fillers. There's a seal inside of there that seals on this uh, stainless steel tube. And then there's a, a little disc of rubber that cre creates the piston that allows this pen to fill with ink. It creates the vacuum as you push that down. Um, neither of them had been replaced. Um, the one in the back was still the, the, the natural fiber and stuff that, that Schaefer used. Uh, originally, and then the front one was literally torn in half and just flapping around inside of there. Um, and so 
caveat emptor, I guess, but also you can hold the sellers in eBay um, accountable for them selling you something that they lied about. Or, you know, and they may come back and say, well, they didn't know that it was told, but you know, somebody told them that it had been repaired, whatever. You know, I don't know. I think that there should be recourse. If somebody says that something is restored, but it isn't, they should be held accountable for it. Um, um, uh, and I guess kind of along the line of purchasing from retailers is to go to a pen show because that's where a lot of retailers go. This one I purchased at a, a fountain pen show. This was at the uh, San Francisco show in 2018. And it is a Parker, sorry, Parker, huh? sorry, everybody, a Schaefer uh, pen for men, uh, five. And it is the, you know, the snorkel filler where the snorkel comes out and you fill it with ink. That seals a little weak, um, but it works. Um, but it didn't fill with ink very well. And the guy took, knocked the price down a little bit. Probably He probably should have knocked it down more because when I took this thing apart, I found out why. There's a little snorkel tube in it. And just below, just like right about in there, was crushed, almost pinched flat. And anybody who had pulled this apart to work on it would have noticed that. And so um, either he misrepresented what he had or somebody misrepresented it to him but whatever the case i mean it did take the price down a tiny bit and i luckily had a repair a replacement part available and so anyway i'm going to be okay if a pen comes to me and not serviceable because i can fix them i have the tools but some of the things you need to look out for are bad seals on the um the schaefer vac fillers these are expensive and difficult to repair. They they break as often as they they can be you know can be repaired. Um, the the diaphragms on these um, vacuumatic Parkers and they can be a little difficult to repair, but you can. But the thing is, is not every pen is repairable. Um, and you run the risk when you buy a pen. Um, and I know that a lot of, you know, those of you who have been looking for fountain pens on the, on eBay and in other places have found that there are a lot of these Schaefer balances and they're going for fairly inexpensive prices and they are creeping up and, and I think people are charging too much for them now, especially the ones that haven't been restored. And you'll find that the, the um, lever filler versions of these Parker, uh, sorry, gosh, I'm going to get the names mixed up all day today, the, the Schaefer's is are much easier to repair. The barrels are much stronger because they, they have thicker material in there. They don't have to make room for the where the plunger goes at the end. Um, and so these are a much safer bet when you're buying a vintage Schaefer um, because they're easier to repair, they're stronger, etc. But if you do get one of these and you are able to repair it well, like I was, um, this one's actually kind of a fun and unusual one. It Not only does it have this very interesting band that's quite wide, um, but the barrel itself has got these windows in it. You see that? I've never seen a pen like that. It's interesting. And you can see that I've put a new... Um, this I had replaced this rod. The one that was in there was one of those rusty black ones. Um, I put a new seal in here. And I... And it's got the new little disc on the end there. So, that, And you can see it doing its thing in there. Let me see if I can get it under the light. Right there. There it is. And these are the parts I took apart. Um, there's a new seal in here, and then there's a new seal there. So that when you pull it back and push it forward, it pops, and then ink fills it up. Anyway, that's all working. But what I didn't notice was, and was not told about, and I don't know if that, that doesn't want to focus here. There we go is if you look at the little breather hole there, that little heart-shaped breather hole, on the right-hand side, there's a crack that goes quite a ways away towards the edge. So this nib is ruined. It's not It's not any good anymore. Um, if you had a super light hand, you might be able to get it to work, but I can't even align the tines on it. It doesn't want to line up, and it doesn't want to... Um, yeah, I, I just can't really use it. I'm going to have to find a replacement nib. And that's another thing to look for is pens that are unrestored but are difficult to restore. The other thing is uh, pens that have nibs that are in bad shape. This is another Schaefer nib that uh, was sitting inside the pen and was holding on by a very, very thin thread. And um, when I touched it, it just it gave. And so I've got a two-piece nib. <laughs> Whatever the case, it's it, it's useless. Um it's not usable anymore. So there's another Schaefer nib that I don't have that uh, I can use. And here's another one that I f from another pen that was 
broken too. Um, oftentimes too, and you need to look carefully at the, the pictures on eBay and other places, is for these mangled nibs. I and mean, look at that thing. Um, if you're thinking about buying a pen with a mangled nib like this, you know, think twice because um, it's going to take a lot to repair it. Uh, I don't know what the going rate for repairing a nib is. Um, I do my own, but honestly, if I was in business for it, um, I, I mean, I, I can't imagine this costing less than $50 to try and knock straight. Um, I may be able to eventually get this one fixed, but man, you can see how mangled it is. And I have actually fixed worse, but um, it doesn't always come out as beautifully as you'd like. So here, for example, the nib on this one, you can see that the end there is kind of wonky looking. It's got kind of, you know, looks like it's been through a little bit of a battle at the tip. Um, this is a Parker vacuumatic nib that one, one tine was twisted completely around the other one. Um, I was able to straighten it and it now works, but it's just not pretty anymore. Um, so look for nibs, uh, look for, you know, bad filling mechanisms. And then another one is, is cracks. Um, I have, um, a couple of Schaefer's that, uh, I, I bought it like a, a bulk of, um, of, uh, Schaefer balance pens and, um, touchdowns and stuff like that. And I I think three out of the 10 pens was actually serviceable. I didn't pay a whole lot for them and that's okay. Um, and if you're capable and you can fix things, um, purchasing damage pens might be the way to go. Just make sure that you know what you're doing. And um, one one example here, this is a, a gold metal pen that was probably made by Parker. It's similar to a Parker Duofold. Um, gold metal didn't actually make any pens. They were a, a contractor and they contracted with other companies to make the pens. And this is so similar to the Parker pens at the same era. Uh, I think it's a Parker. Anyway, um, it was sold to me. It was just the barrel and the cap. There was no section and there was no nib and there was no no nothing it was just empty so i was able to source um the uh the the, the spring inside uh, the j bar i'm not thinking clearly right now that j bar inside I was able to source one of those and i had a section um in my box full of pen parts that fit this and i drilled it out and put a number six gold nib in it um that I picked up from Fountain Pen Revolution, and it's been great. This has been a really good pen, um, and the feed's from Fountain Pen Revolution too. It's the Ebonite. Um, while it's not the same nib and feed that this pen would have had, um, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I couldn't sell it as a full gold medal pen, but gold medal pens weren't first tier anyway, so um, it's, it's not bad, and the matching pencil is fantastic. So there's a lot you can do with these uh, vintage fountain pens, just caveat emptor. You know, beware um, that you're you're looking very closely at the pens. Here's another bad example. This is a Parker 75. I'd always wanted one. This is an early pen with a flat top and flat bottom. Um, but the section here is, is, one, is a made in French one, France one, and as is the nib. Um, I don't know if Parker actually sold American-made pens with French parts in them, or if this is something that happened after the fact. But I, 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 could, I kept using it, and it was getting ink all over my fingers, and I couldn't figure it out. Um, there wasn't any leaking from from the uh, the converter or anywhere else. And then finally, I was able to notice, and I don't know if this will, you know, the camera's going to pick this up or not, but maybe pulling the nib out will help. I don't know if you can see, but there's a chunk out of the section underneath the cap band right there. I mean, out of this this band on the end of the section. Um, there's a chunk of it missing, and what's happening is ink is just pouring right out of that. When you hold it down, it just dribbles out of there, and it goes up underneath this band, and then it gets on your fingers if you if you touch the band at all. Um, so I have to replace this section, and uh, you know I'm having bad luck finding one. So, you know, I don't know if the seller knew that that was a problem. Um, they may have known that the, it was leaking a little bit, but not you know not enough to disclose it when they sold it, or maybe they didn't know at all. Um, it's hard to say. Um, I can't really say that the, the seller didn't know about that or did know about it. I just know that when you buy a vintage pen, you might be buying a pen that's broken. And the seller may not know it, and you may not know it until too late. Um, and then there are the ones that are supposedly repaired, um, kind of like this one here, but aren't, or they're repaired badly. And here's one that even though it came from a fountain pen seller, uh, the pen was repaired very badly. Um, this is a more, um, 
non-leakable. This is a safety pen. Um, I love these things. I collect them. I have several of them. Here's another one. Most of the more pens you're going to find are going to be this size or smaller. This one's actually one of the larger ones I have. So this thing is very unusual and very large. Um, to me, it's like, you know, the very large uh, Waterman safety pens out there. They're just, they're few and far between. They're worth a lot of money. So this is, you know, kind of a, a, a rare pen, and I was excited to get a hold of it. And so to my dismay, I found out that the the shop and the retailer that sold this Either they did a terrible job or somebody else did a terrible job. They didn't catch it and they didn't say anything about it. They sold it as a restored pen, but it is not. Or it was, but it was done so badly that I'm going to have to redo everything. Um, the way you take these apart is you push this plunger down. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of resistance, which means usually means that the cork seal in the back here is doing its job. But I'll show you why that's not true on this pen. So we pull out the uh, the rod and the, the nib unit there. And then in here, there is a collar here, which I've already loosened so I can unscrew it with my finger. This little collar is threaded. And so inside here we have a cork seal. But if you look, you can see that that cork seal is compromised. Let me see if we got a little poker stick here to point it out here. There's a crack. Gosh, camera focus. There we go. There's a crack in that cork seal right there, and it goes all the way down through this new piece of cork. And unfortunately, that new piece of cork is only about half of the cork that should be in there. Um, the cork seals in these pens go quite a ways down to about here, and so there should be you know, a good half inch of cork. And the piece of cork that they you know, restored this pen with is only about half the thick, half the length of that. It's only about a quarter inch of cork that goes down to about here, and then the old cork that doesn't work anymore is about is right here, and then the piece that they put in there is badly cracked, so much so that when I put water in this, I held it this way and it just poured out through that crack. Um, so they restored it without actually restoring it. It that made it feel like it had good seals in the back, but it doesn't. But the most egregious thing, because I can replace that seal. And I use O-rings, and I'll talk about that in another video. But the worst thing that they did was they took a file to this nib collar. You see right up here, right up around the base there, you can see those rough spots. Somebody took a file to this. And I think that what they were doing was trying to make it so that it would pass easily through the throat of the barrel. The problem is they, they ground away so much of it that it rattles in there now. And it will never hold ink. If you, even if you get a new seal on the back here, well, as soon as you tip this down to write with it, ink will just pour right out of it. So they ruined this collar. And it's not like I can go out and buy, you know, a, a hundred year old a thin tube of ebonite to replace this you know, very specific collar for this very old and very cool pen. So what I'm going to have to do instead is build this up with some other material so that it will actually do its job and seal up against the end of the barrel when the nib is extended. And I will use Urushi because it's the, the closest thing I have to something that will be a very good and permanent repair. Um, I'm sure there are other substances out there, but for me, Urushi is the ticket on this one. But it means that I'm going to have to put several coats of Urushi on here and then... And then um, and then sand them down until they are perfectly smooth and fitted to the end of that barrel. It's going to be a little bit fiddly and finicky, but I refuse to send this pen back to that retailer because they obviously didn't care enough about it to do a good job with it um, in the first place, and they didn't care enough to, um, to even test the pen afterwards or anything like that. They basically just made it look and feel like it was a restored pen, but it wasn't. Um, and so I don't think I'll be buying from that retailer ever again. Um, and I will be scrupulously looking at any pens that I purchase from a retailer, even, you know, even if they say something's restored, how do you know? Um, so caveat emptor, you know, these are old pens. They are very, very old. This one's at least a hundred years old. Um, most of these pens here are from the, you know, the thirties and forties and maybe fifties. Um, so they're old. They're quite a bit older than me and they you know they're going to need some care and some time and attention and if you're going to buy one of them you have to understand that 
that you will have some disappointments or you end up might end up like me with a drawer full of broken pens. But be careful when you buy them and make sure that you buy from a reputable seller. Um, and if you're buying at a pen show, make sure, again, it's from a reputable seller and, then, and that they um, back up their product. And that's it for tonight. And thank you very much for sticking with me and all of my pretty green pens. And I hope you have a good one. Bye.